Welcome back to Linear Algebra. Last time we talked about vector spaces, so this time we're going to talk about subspaces. So a subspace of a vector space V is a subset H that satisfies three conditions. So number one, the zero vector is an H. So we know that the zero vector is required to be in a vector space V, so it's also going to be required to be in a subspace. Uh, the second point, H is going to be closed under addition. So this means that if we take our u and our v in h, then we're also going to have that u plus v is in h. And thirdly, h is closed under multiplication of scalars. So if we have a scalar c in the real numbers, then c times u is also going to be in h. So these are also required for vector spaces. And from these three, you can get the rest of the axioms needed to satisfy a vector space. So essentially, subspaces are also vector spaces. Uh, they just come from a bigger vector space, and then they're limited to a smaller space. So for instance, if we have our abstract vector space here, V, then the subspace H is going to be a smaller part of it. Okay, so here's a question. Is zero a subspace of Rn. So there's three conditions here. One, we need to check if zero is in our subspace, which is just zero, and of course it is. Two, we need to check if for any two vectors u and v in our subspace, that u plus v is in our subspace. So here, the only thing we have is zero plus zero, which is equal to the zero vector. Therefore, of course, it's going to be in the zero subspace. Okay, and finally, number three, multiply by scalars. We also need to make sure that that's in our subspace. So C times zero is going to be the zero vector for any C, therefore it's also in our zero subspace. Therefore, the zero here is indeed a subspace of Rn. So that's the way we can check subspaces. Check the three properties, and if they hold, you're good. Okay, here is a little bit of a trickier question. So let V1 and V2 be in V, and we wanna show that H, which is the span of V1 and V2, is a subspace of V. So what we have to do is we have to check, okay, number one is zero in the subspace. So that's, that's our first step. So if we take uh, zero, which is equal to zero V1, plus zero V2, then of course this is going to be in our subspace H. So the first criteria is good. For the second criteria, we need to define V1 and V2. So we're going to take V1 equal to um, S1, oh, I shouldn't do this S1, I shouldn't label this V1. I'm going to label this U, and we're gonna have this S1 V1 plus S2 v2, and then we're going to have a vector v, which is equal to t1 v1 plus t2 v2. Okay, so we have u, we have v, we're going to say that these are in h. So we have to show that u plus v is in h. So u plus v is going to equal, well we can gather the like terms here, so we have s1 plus t1 times v1 plus s2 plus t2 times v2, and we know this is gonna be an h because this vector here is in the span. And our h is the span, therefore u plus v is going to be in the subspace. So the second condition holds. The third condition, we need to check to see that c times any vector for any scalar is going to be in the subspace. So c times u is going to be c times s1 v1 plus c times s2 v2, and we know this is in the subspace because this is also in the span, therefore all three conditions hold, so h, which is the span v1 and v2, is a subspace of v. Okay, so if we take the span of v1 through v2 for some vector space, then it's gonna be a subspace. And we can generalize this more. So if we have vectors v1 through vp in our vector space, 
then the span of v1 through vp is going to be a subspace of v. So again, this is just an extension of what we did before. So we have to show our three conditions. So for the first one, we can show that, okay, well, zero is going to be zero v1 plus zero v2 all the way up to zero vp. So that's gonna be fine. For number two, uh, we did two vectors, which went from uh, v1 to v2, and then we had another v1, v2. So we can do the same thing here. We can take u, we can take v, we can do s1, v1, all the way up to sp, vp, and then for their v uh, vector, should I, maybe we should call it w. Then we have t1, v1, all the way up to tp, vp, and these are just the same steps as previously, but we can see, we can extend the result from the previous question, and we can extend to this theorem. So the H is the span is always going to be a subspace as long as the vectors V1 through VP are in the vector space. So again, the same thing for three, it just extends on the previous exercise. I won't do it because all we're doing is instead of going to V2, we're going to VP. So we just make the addition a little bit longer and it's the same proof. So this is same as last. Okay, so let's move on. Here's a question that you may see in your textbook that looks a little bit more confusing. So I say, okay, let W be the set of all vectors of the form, then I have C minus A, A minus 6B, 2P plus A, and I want to show that this W here is a subspace, or find a counterexample. So W is the set of all vectors of this form. So we just did two things with spans. So maybe we sh should reduce this to a span of something. Maybe we can get a few vectors here in a span and we can show that this is a subspace. Okay, uh, I should say show W is a subspace of V where V is the vector space containing uh, three entries. So we can say this is a subspace of R3 or something like that. Um, but for the sake of this question, it's not necessary. Okay, so we have C minus A, A minus 6B, and 2B plus A. So we wanna make this a span of something. So we can separate this. So what we can do is we can maybe take A times something, and then we can add B times something, and then we can add C times something, and then we'll get vectors here. So if we take this form, well, this looks like a span, right? So this is kind of like saying S1 V1 plus S2 V2 plus S3 V3. And then we have our V1, V2, and V3 here. So what are these going to be? Well, we can rearrange this to make this a little bit easier to see. So we have minus A plus C in the first row, we have a minus 6b in the second row, and we have a plus 2b in the third row. So we can break this down. So if we take a look at the first column, we have negative a, 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 so this will be negative 1, 1 if we factor a out. For the second column, if we factor the b out, we're going to get 0, negative 6, and 2. And in the third column, if we factor the c out, we're going to get 1, 0, 0. So we can see now that this is just equivalent to the span of these three vectors, which is negative one, one. Ooh, that looks like a number there. Negative one, one, zero, negative six, two, and one, zero, zero. So we know that the span is going to be part of, or it's gonna be a subspace so there we go, we found it. So that is an example question. Now, I also have some true or false questions because when you get to this abstract notion of subspaces and vector spaces, it's good to have a grasp on what we're actually saying here. So here's some true or false questions. Question one, a subspace is also a vector space. Well, a vector space has 10 axioms. A subspace has 
three main axioms that we have to satisfy. So the subspace has closed under addition, closed under scalar multiplication, and zero is in the set. But all of these vectors that we're taking are from a vector space. So they're going to satisfy the 10 axioms. Therefore, a subspace is going to be a vector space because we can get access to all 10 of those axioms just from the vectors or the elements that we took from the vector space. Okay, so two, a vector space is also a subspace. This one is also going to be true. And why is this? Well, a is, I should say a subspace G is a subspace of G. So every vector space is a subspace of itself. Now, this is just like the subset relationship. Of course, A is going to be a subset of A if we do set theory. So G is going to be a subspace of G. They satisfy the same criteria. So a vector space is also going to be a subspace of itself. Last question. R2 is a subspace of R3. Okay, so here is where you might get tripped up. If you're thinking visually, and you might be thinking visually, so we have x1, x2, and x3, so this is a vector space. Now you're thinking R2. Okay, so R2 is just going to cover, um, if we extend this bottom area a little bit, maybe I can make this look like a plane, you might be thinking, okay, R2 is just this plane down here. And that would be wrong. So let's take a look at this. What does a vector in R2 look like? Well, a vector in R2 looks like this. It's going to be x, y. While a vector in R3 is going to have three entries, x, y, and z. Okay, so every vector in a subspace has to come from the vector space. So if we have a vector in R2, it has to come from R3. So R3 has to give its vector to R2 because we're working with a subset of this R3 here. So this XYZ, you cannot get the vector XY from the vector XYZ. You can get the vector XY0, you can get that one, but that's not in R3, R2. So the answer is false. How would we remedy this? Well, you just take all the vectors x, y, 0. And then you could say, OK, this is a subspace. So this is a subspace of R3. But if we take away this 0 and we just make it a two entry vector, then it's not a subspace. So that was subspaces. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I'll answer them the best that I can.